What is culture? We know that culture is incredibly important. We know that we're supposed to think about culture, think about other cultures, and appreciate them and respect them. But what is culture? Is it big or is it small? And what is the place of technology in culture? So these were the sorts of questions that I had when I came to Japan about a decade ago as a sociologist. Let me tell you a story about this. This story is going to include some technology. It's going to include some innovative gardening, some smart cards, and some toilet technologies. Now, before we can run, we need to stand, of course. So before we can talk and communicate, we need to have a position to communicate from. And increasingly in Japan and around Asia, I hear students being told, before you can understand another culture, you have to fully understand your own. Now, I don't fully disagree with this, but I do think it's a bit problematic. I think it's too big. I think it's at least the size of a country. And if we ask students to start from that perspective, I think, and I've seen, it puts a lot of students off. So I wonder if there's another approach. Now, of course, when I came to Japan from the UK, I had to follow this kind of advice because emigrating is quite scary. So I read some of these books, you know, with um, titles like Doing Business with the Japanese, filled with generalizations and stereotypes about what Japanese people do and about what non-Japanese people do. And I found that when I got here, most of it was not very useful. Let me uh, explain why. So this is a photograph I took near my hometown, near my house, where I grew up. As you can see, it's, uh, it's very rural, it's fairly green, there's lots of space to walk around and think big sociological thoughts. This is also from nearby, and um, it's, it's a village, but it's on the outskirts of a town, so we do have technology. You can see we've got some cables, uh, we have farm machinery. No, we have other things as well. We have cars and computers and the internet and things like that. But I moved from there to the west of Tokyo, which is around here. And I noticed two things. The first thing I noticed was there isn't a lot of green. There isn't a lot of green at all. And secondly, from my perspective, there was a lot of advanced technology all around me. Yeah, I see some of you, you're saying there is some green, right? What about, what about this? Here, this is green. <laughs> <laughs> this is synthetic grass. This is this color all year round, and it's heated underneath. So I had this problem. And then I realized that this is not necessarily a problem between being British and being Japanese. This is a problem about being rural and urban. Maybe this would have happened to me in the UK, I don't know. Another thing happened when I came here. I had to present about my research at my first research center. And I brought my presentation I prepared on my disc. And I walked in, ready to do it. Yeah, this is Tokyo, 2003. We don't use floppy disks anymore. So I couldn't present it. So I was forced to think about technology and culture and communities. And this has become my research focus since then. Let me introduce to you two projects. So this is the first one. This is a piece of research where we looked at a, a support system for communities of researchers at conferences. Now in this system, you can see I took video data of all different angles and the screen they were looking at. In this system, people would log in by putting down a smart card that they got when they registered at the conference. So you put down a smart card. If you put down two smart cards on the readers together, 
automatically a social network diagram would appear in front of you. You could see all of the relationships you've got, your co-authorships, the shared laboratories you've been in, all sorts of fascinating stuff. And I collected a lot of video data of people using this. And I noticed something quite interesting. There was a problem with the cards. Now, the cards themselves, no technological problem. The cards were the same sort of cards that you use when you leave here and you get on the train. It's the same kind of technology, that kind of smart card. We call an IC card in Japan. Now, this system was designed so that you would put a card down and that would log you into the system. Something would appear. When you took the card off, that would log you out. So I have a lot of video of people doing this. I have a lot of video of people double taking, thinking what on earth is going on, I'm doing this, and for some reason I get a flash of a social network diagram, and then it's gone. There's something wrong with this system. So through this research, I was able to realize there's kind of two cultures here. There's the culture of the users, and these are the ones who don't understand why on earth this usual way we use smart cards is not working, because you don't leave your smart card when you get on the train, right? And there was the community of the researchers who were thinking, why are these people not doing what they're supposed to be doing? Let me introduce another project to you. Raise your hand if you recognize what this is. Raise your hand if you recognize where this is from. Okay, all of you, when you leave and you go into the station outside of here, please go to the restroom. You can see this, right? So obviously this is a restroom. For those of you who don't speak Japanese, the top button, the top button there flushes the toilet. Now, most of us newcomers, if we don't speak Japanese, we realize this by accident, but I was interested in this one beneath it, the, this box. <laughs> what is this piece of technology? Now, this piece of technology is fascinating. If you put your hand in front of the sensor, this technology makes a synthetic, a fake, water sound. Now, obviously, this is designed to mask to cover up the noises that you yourself would make when you're <laughs> using the, you get the idea. So I did some research. Now, unlike the other project, of course, uh, I can't video this. So I did some interviews. And I interviewed the users of this. And I found, well, lots of interesting things, but two are probably most significant. Firstly, this is primarily used by women. In fact, this is marketed to women, although I didn't go in the women's toilet to uh, take this picture. So. <laughs> and secondly, for some women, this can powerfully influence the behavior that they have with other people. Let me give you a quote from one of my interviews. If I fail with my timing, I stay in the cubicle until everyone is left. What does this mean if I fail with my timing? Well, this box, it gives you 20 seconds of water sounds. 20 seconds. Now, you can extend it by putting your hand in front of the sensor again, but basically you have 20 seconds to do what you have to do in the restroom. <laughs> and here is a woman who, and she's not alone in this, and several other interviewees had similar things, where she has to coordinate herself with this machine. So this result, and the result of the other one, this is not um, really anything to do with history of the nation or you know, political spending, but it's incredibly interesting. And I think it can raise lots of questions about gender, male, female, men, women, in Japan. So where am I going with this? Why am I talking about cards and, and toilets? Well, let's get back to culture. I said at the beginning, 
is it necessary to start by thinking big? Should we start by thinking of the big issues? And this is particularly relevant in Asia right now. Well, in my research, I think we don't need to. I think we can start small because it's in the small things that culture is really found. It's in the small interactions that really is where culture is. And we can observe, we can see those small things and put them together and think of some bigger things. So how do we do that? Well, in sociology, we often talk about making the familiar strange. This is some way to, to look at what you want to look at. But with this culture, I think this is about distraction. And I think in education, we're constantly telling students, don't be distracted. Look to your goal. Look exactly where you want to go and ignore all other distractions. But when it comes to culture, I think you have to be distracted because culture is in the small things that you have to notice. And those small things that culture might be in the use of a smart card or it might be in how we use a restroom. Thank you. <laughs>